Thanks for joining CBC Rewind, where we sit down with Pastor Gary as he dives deeper into his sermon. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm here with Pastor Gary getting ready to record our second series of the Sermon Rewind. Um, So we're going to be taking a deeper look into this past Sunday's message, and he's going to be answering some questions from the congregation, and we're going to go ahead and look into next week's sermon and and see what we can find out. So um, how are you, Gary? I'm well. How are you? Good. Doing Doing good. This is your first time doing this? It is. uh, How do you think it's going so far? Got a little bit of the the morning jitters, but... uh, Is it going okay so far? It is. It's going good. All right. All right, so um, for those of us who weren't here to view last week's Sermon Rewind, why don't you kind of just break down the sermon series and what we're going to be learning, what can we expect in the next coming four to five weeks? Okay, well, we're looking at five different areas of emphasis that you find in Ephesians chapter 4. And what are those? How do we push back the darkness, and, and how do we live with a apostolic mindset, a prophetic mindset? How do we live with an evangelistic mindset, a pastoral mindset, and what I call an instructive mindset or a teacher's mindset? It's just a well-rounded approach to understanding the fullness of who Christ is and being mature. That's basically the bottom line. So we can expect to be learning a lot in the next four or five weeks. Well, you can expect me trying to teach a lot. (laughs) Now, whether you learn a lot or not, I don't know. I hope so. I know I am. All right. So... um... We've got a couple questions from last week's sermon from the congregants, and for those of you who haven't watched, go ahead and hop on the app, and before you dig into this, why don't you go ahead and watch the message? Um, But last week's sermon was Pushing Back the Darkness Apostolically, and we've got a a couple questions from the congregants for Gary. Okay. So first thing we've got is, how have things changed and how we are to live apostolically in modern times compared to how we were to live in the past? And along with that, what are some things that we have to look at differently given the modern world's current state? Interesting. Okay. So do we live apostolically in the first century equally as much as we do in the 21st century? Right. Well, I would have to say yes. I think, I think this passage, as we get more familiar with it, is basically God giving us a recipe on how to attain maturity and fullness in Christ. Unity, maturity, mm-hmm. and fullness. Unity, discernment, uh, maturity, and fullness. So when you have a recipe, you can't leave one of them out. Right. You can't leave out the, the, the ingredients. So all five of these, of the fivefold ministry, we need the influence of these each of these five areas. We need to be thinking uh, in a like-minded manner than each of these five areas because they're all crucial ingredients to an end result, which is a maturity, unity, discernment, and fullness in Christ. Right. Okay. Um, so I would say there's no difference. I okay. would say that we still need the same balanced approach to our, our, our Christian life in the 21st century as did in the first. And I think we, I think we need to do away with, a, with a pr- this practice if it's a, involved in our life, and that is what I call entrenchment. Entrenchment is when we, we get so used to dealing with what it means to be a Christian and how to walk as a disciple in our own way that possibly we are entrenched and we at the neglect of a different way or a more robust way. So what I'm offering in this series is a more robust, balanced mm-hmm. approach to having fullness in Christ as opposed to possibly what we've just sort of out of habit made, made a, a definition of what it means to walk in right. Christ. So it's just a deeper, wider look into how we can... Uh, yeah, both deep and wide. Life. Yeah, I would, right. I would say so. Yeah, and I think it's God's intent. That's why I'm right. emphasizing it. All right, awesome. Um, so uh, along with that, and this is kind of one that I was curious about too, um, what is an extra step that we can take just to make sure we are living as apostolically as possible? Okay. I, I'm not, I've been, you know, I've been around the block a few times. Uh, this is not my first rodeo, okay? Right. So I'm, <laughs> I'm fully aware that not every person, okay, that hears this series is going to go out and even look at making changes. Right. Some are, and some are, some are going to take it quite serious. And, and to those I say, uh, think about this. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter 1, Paul is saying, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Like, well, this is kind of odd to me. Didn't Jesus say, follow me? Now Paul's saying, well, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. 
what I'm saying is Paul's an apostle. So if you're serious about making these kind of enhancements to your walk, mm-hmm. then get serious about like like study him, study right. an apostle, right? Because if he says, follow me as I follow Christ, there's something there I don't want to skip over. Mm-hmm. So we need what to is, dig into that word dig into, a little yeah. deeper. You know, more, I think more often we need to do word searches, word studies, mm-hmm. character studies. Study apostles. What did they do? How did they do it? When did they do it? What did they not do? How did they, how did they go about dealing with persecution? Yeah. How did they, whatever. How did they live their life as one who is sent? And that's really what the word means. Okay. So, so I, would, I would say to the person who wants to up their game a little bit in this area, Study apostleship, become quite acquainted with it. Look at the Book of Acts and the Gospels. Uh, are you? And then ask yourself the question: Am I one sent in the most basic of ways, the simplest mm. way of defining apostle? Am I sent or am I sedentary? Right. And if I'm going to follow somebody like Paul, what would my life look like, and how different would that be from what my mm-hmm. walk looks like now? What kind of changes would have to yeah. happen? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, perceptions. Uh, points of emphasis, things to intensify, right. things to bring more balance. Yeah, awesome. You got to put it. You got to put into work. And how would you pray apostolically? Yeah, yeah. You know, go into that a little bit too. Like praying apostolically means you're not just praying for your own personal needs, although there's nothing wrong with that. But you're thinking more global. You're thinking more thirty thousand feet rather than three feet off the ground. You're you're thinking about what God is doing in the world mm-hmm. in a bigger, higher plane. If you're praying apostolic, you're praying with apostolic authority over disease and sickness and and racism and poverty or plagues or whatever. Uh, I find it interesting when this when this COVID uh, virus hit. I, I didn't hear one Christian leader praying for the eradication of the virus. It, it was almost like it was accepted. And an apostolic way of looking at that would be to pray for the yeah for the demise of the virus before it even. Got to different mm-hmm. borders, right? So that's an apostolic mindset. See, that's fullness. Where we lack fullness, we probably need apostolic influence, if not perspective. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, you, you mentioned how patience is almost a lost word now last Sunday. Um, uh, kind of walk us through why you said this and um, how can we work on becoming more spiritually patient you know, in our honest, day-to-day lives? To be honest with you, they just don't have time. Let's just move <laughs> on. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't say that flippantly. Um, okay, patience. I've had the privilege of, of um, I've had the privilege of traveling to various countries and cultures, and you know, not every culture is as quote advanced technologically as we are. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't traveled, think of uh, a, West, uh, a Wild West movie, right? These people didn't sit around. They sat around a lot. They talked. They listened. Right. <laughs> they weren't in a rush. You know, they, they took them how many months did it take them to travel the country? We do it in a matter of hours. They did it in a matter of months. Okay? So anyway, what I'm trying to say is in other cultures, you see a, a much higher level of patience. Mm. Romans 12 and 2 talks about this, this idea, this concept that you and I – as believers, can be conformed to the pattern of this world. So what's the pattern of this world? The pattern of this world, my friend, is that there's not enough time in a day to do what we want to do. Why? Because we're rushed. Mm. We're impatient. I would say that um, when I was coming up as a kid, I never heard the words attention deficit disorder. We we may be be causing that. Okay? We may be... That may be prolifically increasing because of our culture. We imagery is bombarding us constantly. You're in media, you know this. Yeah, I, I know it. Editing, than quick movement, most people. shorter <laughs> commercials, like sound bites. There's a whole mechanism out there, right? That is just trying constant to, stimulation, constant like yeah. stimulation, instant grab your attention, instant gratification, and and I just over the last. Uh, 25 years, I've just noticed that, that this has only increased. It hasn't decreased in any way, shape, or form. In fact, the things that are supposed to save us time are tools by which we cost ourselves patience. Right. Like you have a cell phone, you're supposed to be accessible 24 7. Right. People have an expectation if they call you, you're going to answer no matter what. So 
So with, with the with the commercialization, the 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 marketplace, technology, the change in technology, the change in everything. We don't we don't work at our workplace longer as long as we used to. We don't live in a place as long as we used to. We're constantly moving, and this cost us patience. And, and, and what I'm really saying is, if we if we allow this to get out of control, it quenches the spirit. Now, why do mm-hmm. I say that? Because the fruit of the spirit is long suffering or patience. So if we have an absence of patience, we're squelching the spirit of God right. who wants to do a work in us. So how do we counteract that? Well, this is why I talk about meditation, silence, putting boundaries around things that, that Just slowing down every demand once in a while. our attention. My so I have to have a cell phone. My cell phone is not allowed to have me. Mm. Like I can go through dinner with my cell phone in the car, in the parking lot of the and restaurant. And freak out for I don't 10 need minutes. To, <laughs> I don't need to constantly be at someone's beck and call. So anyway, what I'm saying is patience has, has been um, erratic, is being eradicated from our life by, by the abundance, if we allow it, of this fast-paced world we live in. I would also say that, that we have made comfort and convenience uh, gods to be worshipped, gods with a small mm-hmm. g. Uh, there's there's a lot to be said for comfort. I'm, I'm all for it. There's, Jesus said, comfort those who mourn. But 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 also there's a lot to be said for convenience because you can get a lot done. But when they when we start to worship them, right? We don't do um, like if you're a Christian and you're listening to me, you and I are supposed to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Well, what's the workout part? Well, you got to put in the time, right? You gotta, you gotta research. You gotta dig into word. Yeah. You gotta slow yourself down. And if we're so used to having convenience and comfort all the time, we're not gonna put in that extra effort. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. And then we start to look at God as though He's our source of, uh, you know, convenience. He's convenient for us to have. Mm-hmm. Well, any relationship takes time. A friendship takes time. God says, "I no longer call you servant. I call you friend." Well, that that takes time to build. Mm-hmm. And you have to slow down. You have to digest the word. You have to you have to think about things. You have to sit in silence. You have to balance your life back out before you step out into it, and it just overwhelms you. So, I would say that uh, the the God of instant gratification needs to be put on hold so that we can develop mm-hmm. some patience. Good things come to those who wait. Right, right. They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. So. It's uh, it's so prevalent, but but if you don't stop and think about it, you miss it. Right, and it's certainly not a a, a light thing to wrap your head around. No, we surf the internet, we change channels, we change jobs, we change spouses, we change everything as fast as we possibly can, and think that it's normal. But in reality, I don't think God calls us to that. He calls mm-hmm. us to slow, sit and slow, wait, slow down, and enjoy and appreciate. Right. Anyway, uh, that's why I said it. Yeah, awesome. On Sunday. Um, so before we kind of get into looking at the next week's sermon, did you have anything you wanted to kind of expand and add from this past Sunday sermon, uh, pushing back the darkness apostolically? Yeah. Don't don't dismiss it. Mm. Don't immediately dismiss it and say, you know, I'm not I'm not an apostle. I'm not saying you are an apostle, but I'm saying you can't be apostolic. Right. So a couple observations. If you took a person who was a believer and you took them out of the local church and they didn't and, and, and they didn't really have an five influences in their life, maybe they only had maybe they had none, maybe one, maybe two of the five. You start to see that they they, they come they come to a point of wanting. We need uh, a teacher's voice in our life. Mm-hmm. When, when the Bible says, come follow me, Jesus says, follow me, what he's saying is, come follow me and watch how I am apostolic. Watch how I am a shepherd, a pastor. Follow me and do as I do as I teach. I'm the, I'm the master, the rabbi, so I want to mm-hmm. teach. You fo- follow my teaching. Uh, I'm going to prophesy and I'm the fulfillment of prophecy. So follow me and learn about that. And 
and follow me as I reach the lost because you're do the, you're to do the work of an evangelist. So following Christ doesn't just mean following Christ as we define him. It means follow him and, and be mindful of and even interact with and even engage in the behavior of these five areas of mm-hmm. ministry. Because the result, as we said over and over again, maturity, unity, discernment, and fullness in Christ. So I would say um, don't dismiss uh, words like apostolic because that you yeah. feel they have no relevance for you. They do. They're a necessity. Remember, it's part of the, the recipe. The second thing I would say, is, especially as we get into prophetic, um, I'm looking forward to this coming Sunday, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to demonstrate for people, people who don't think they're prophetic at all, people who don't think they've ever shared a prophecy at all, mm-hmm. I'm going to show them how powerful their prophecies are in their life. Kind of opens my eyes for some of the people. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to try anyway, with the Lord's yeah. help, to demonstrate how powerful powerful prophecy is in everyone's life even though they don't know what's happening Mm. if we can do that we can then look at well how do i think of the world more apostolically more prophetically Uh, we have slowly but surely been indoctrinated in this idea of nationalizing or domesticating our christianity Mm. and we've made it an american thing (laughs) And it's more, it's that plus more. Yeah. It's far more than that. God's interested in us prophesying, seeing prophecy fulfilled, and apostolically praying over and reaching people of all tribes, all nations, all people groups that beyond our borders, and though they're different, we may be afraid of them or we don't understand them. The fact of the matter is, uh, God's got something to say to us in these five areas. So I'm really looking forward to this Sunday and how we can communicate to ourselves prophetically and to others without even realizing mm-hmm. it. That's awesome. Um, so this Sunday we've got Pushing Back the Darkness Prophetically, as Gary just mentioned. So he's going to be on the platform again with the TV and some slides and um, going to really, really sit down and, and break down a lot of these key points to push back the darkness prophetically. Um, and I, I know I'm excited. And I know a lot of you guys are. So make sure this Sunday that you watch that at 945 or 1115. Um so it, coming in the next week, is there anything else you kind of wanted to mention before we stop today? No, um, just be, just, uh, you know, yeah, send questions, keep be. sending questions yeah, or, or comments. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lady up in uh, Canada uh, sent me something the other day and a uh, lady down south somewhere. And it's very helpful because when you share your questions or insights or observations or testimonies even, it, it, it really gives a direction to a message that uh, there's, mm. a, there's a part of that message that really probably needs to be addressed because if that person is experiencing that thing, then maybe there's more. Right. So uh, to the woman who, who's, who painted a painting that looks something very similar to the, to the series logo here, your, your input is greatly appreciated. And, and uh, your insight and your questions, they're all good. Yeah. So it, it's great. So I'm glad we're doing this. I hope people like it. Yeah. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, so this Sunday, make sure you watch the message, and then afterwards, send Gary an email to ask a question about it at um, askgary at cbchighlands.com, or you can do it on any of our social pages on our app. You can send us a message. Um, I know I'm excited for it. Cool. I, I'm pumped up for this Sunday. Um, you know, again, just thank you so much for joining and answering these questions. You know, these are awesome for me. These are awesome for the, the congregation and community to hear, and it's just uh, – it's a big blessing to kind of take a deeper look into these. these Dylan, messages. you might have a, you might, you um, might have a future in radio. Man. <laughs> yeah, this is your first little thing. I'm, I'm not sure about that one. Did you sleep uh, last night? Were you I nervous? I didn't. I was I was up all night. I'm just it's just you and me <laughs> sitting here, man. You did great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Can't um, you hear the applause? <laughs> I'll add some in post. No, you did great. We'll put some claps in. But, Good work. Uh, thank Good you, job. everybody, for joining. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll end it smooth than that. There you go. <laughs> I'll, I'll end it with you. Okay, <laughs> let's pray. God, if there's some way to see this world apostolically, please reveal it to us. But also, let us go digging. Let us go digging for that. If there's prophetic need in our life uh, to, uh, to, to end some prophecy and to begin others, give us a sensitivity. Move us along that we want to be mature in you, discerning what is deceptive and not, and unified 
but also Lord, full, the fullness of bring on the fullness of Christ in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to email Gary your questions at askgary at cbchighlands.com.